Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to today's installment of Creative for More, the podcast. And I have a guest I'm absolutely um, enamored by. I'm telling you, I saw her on Instagram and I thought, you know what, I have to get her on the podcast. You know, I always bring the best, best guests, definitely. Um, so today I've got the amazing Mayowa Adegoke and she's an award-winning TV show host, yes, an international journalist based in Dubai, UAE, um, currently um, a foreign correspondent for one of Africa's leading news stations, Channels TV, and she reports on stories of global and African and interest within the Middle East and has interviewed several high profile personalities from the US, UK, Nigeria, UAE and Congo. We're just going to drop a few names, you know, just so you know the level, you know, yeah. <laughs> So some of these personalities include the CEO um, of Dubai Tourism, which is Issam Kazim. She's interviewed Nigeria's Vice President, Yemi Osibanjo, and world-renowned British artist, Sasha Jaffrey, who's the creator of the world's largest painting on canvas. We've got Eric Man Mandela. We've got heavyweight champion Francis. And this is where I absolutely drop the ball because I can't pronounce the surname. It's Ganao. Gano. <laughs> Gano. <laughs> so that, that would teach you when I'm trying to name drop, name the ones that you can actually name. <laughs> Mayo, it's absolutely fantastic to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Really oh, awesome, awesome. So I, I, I probably not done as good as I could have, you know, with trying to introduce you. So, um, can you do a better job? Can you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are in your own words, and also put in the things that you know a script and a bio will, will definitely miss. So. First of all, I am possibly the worst person to sell myself in, <laughs> in certain light because for me, it's, you know, I just do stuff and move on. So mm, I love it. You know, to have to start saying, nah, it's, no but time. Just try, time. just try, just try, just a little bit. <laughs> all right. Hello, everyone. My name is Maya Wadigoke. I'm a media professional. I'm the founder of Road to Success Seminar, something I'm really, really proud to you know, at birth. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm an author. Ooh. I'm a child of God. Oh, I love it. And I live. Yeah, pretty mm. much. I live. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So a question I always start with is, um, you know, what was that path that led you here? Like, who were you as a child? Have you always known that you would be like doing what you were doing now or did you have you know something else you wanted to be as a child and uh, you know who are you as a child tell us tell us tell us tell us <laughs> so i as a child i've always been very adventurous mm. uh, i always wanted to do media mm. or at least i wanted to do things that felt natural most natural to me and most comfortable, right? So in, in trying to choose a career, it was between be a lawyer or be a journalist. Mm -hmm. And at, at that point, law seemed bookish. Law was like, you, you just have your head buried in books forever. Oh, my Lord this and my Lord that, and this case that happened in, you know, zero, zero, 005 year, that seemed boring. But to just have to talk, Oh. to speak with people to mm. discuss ideas and think, that seemed like that's what i do every day so that was like please i don't want to be reading all these boring books for the rest of my life <laughs> let me let me just do what i do daily i make a career out of that okay. and i followed my natural inclinations and went you know the way of journalism plus my dad was a journalist ah you see a bit of expo right you saw a bit of behind the scenes you knew you could do it so this but is the thing honest, one thing that really sold me was parties like my dad used to go to all the coolest parties ah. <laughs> we used to go to all the coolest like all the vip parties and oh, wow. like I, I like this kind of thing you know you'll be on first <laughs> basis with you know all these big people that seems so fun right and i'm like you know what let's go there sign me up 
So what, what was what was that first initial? So was it just how how did you then pivot? Like okay, did you start? You went obviously you studied. I see from your bio you studied mass communication. Like how how did you go? Like from a young aspiring you know journalist like this is who I want to be. How did you actually become it? I I've always been who I am. Hmm right so for me it's not until you get into a certain position or get into it is it is it's who i am like so back in uni everybody knew all my classmates they knew that Maya and channels tv had been saying it for the longest oh, wow. and how did that happen i have a thing for the best i have a thing for like what's the best what's the top that's what i want and i entered at, uh, at channels um, my, one of my internships um, in school and since then it's like bingo plus as a child I remember when I was in primary school um, and when channels had the children's belt at four o'clock I remember how my brother and I my younger brother we would literally race from school to get home so we can catch the 4 p.m cartoons so channels I already had like a love story going on with and then growing up knowing i wanted to be in media and in particular tv and then knowing that it's channels or nothing right mm. so even in my university days you know there's just that thing of ideas or leadership or bringing people together if i think and that's how i am till today if i think of something i want to do it mm. period I, I i think it and i just want to see it realized there's mm. just something exciting and powerful about imagining something conceptualizing something and mm. following through till the end to bring mm. it into reality which mm. is really how everything we see today everything exists, exists. Every platform every building every anything it's because somebody sat down and thought about it maybe they were inspired by god maybe they just thought i don't know point mm. is it was from nothing into something and mm. that's how i am so back in university I, you know, took up leadership positions. I was the first female president for my association back in uni. I've always been ambitious. I've always had big dreams, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm picking up ideas. It's always big, like, how are we going to do this thing? I don't know, mm -hmm. but this is the idea. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much that's how it started. Mm -hmm. When I finished uni, I went to serve in Yola, Adamawa, mm -hmm. and... I again Which is a state in Nigeria. Also. Yeah, yeah, Adamawa State in northern mm. Nigeria. And again, you know, just some of my hour will be in front. I've always been a popular jingo all my life. <laughs> Everywhere. I don't know. I've always been a popular jingo. And then I ended up at OBS, which is the I think it's called Otondo Broadcasting Service or something. Anyway, for, for core members, people serve in government mm. and we have the one year mandatory service. Hmm. We've got like a radio thing going on on camp. I didn't I know about that, you know, Otondo <gasps> Broadcasting Service. I, I, I served in Kaduna. Are you, I didn't know about that. Are you Nigerian? Are you state. sure? Are you no, sure? You're never Nigerian. heard about it. Obviously, it wasn't my interest, so I didn't follow the breadcrumbs that led <laughs> leading oh, me there. Well, well maybe the guys um, over at yours weren't as active, or maybe it didn't exist. But oh, this was wow. this is actually a thing on camp. Really? It's like a radio service, oh, and okay. core members run it. So... I got on air, you know, doing a morning show or something, and people just fell in love with my voice. Like, oh, who is that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's that phone, English. Mm -hmm. You know, when you speak good English, mm -hmm. you get attention. Mm -hmm. So there was that going on. Next thing you know, there was this VIP coming to visit um, the camp. They had me read the letter to receive him. You know, again, just that exposure. Next thing you know, three weeks are up. I decided I was staying in Ademawa. Uh, and then I end up at Adamawa TV, the government TV. Um, so I'm there. I'm one of, I think, three or four core members. But I'm the only one who's actually doing the journalist media stuff. I'm mm. reporting stories. I think the only thing I didn't do was actually read on air. But mm. I was doing stories. I was like, all of that. And that's really how I started. Mm. I got the offer to stay back in Adamawa in a private TV station. Mm. Uh, go, is it Go Tell now? But at the time, you know, it's like, okay, they're offering 90,000 Naira. And mm. this is 2011. It's oh. a lot of money. Oh. 
for entry level. Mm. So it's either take this and start, but hey, it's in the north. It's not really what I wanted, but it's good money and it's a start. You don't know what awaits you if you go to Lagos. Mm -hmm. You might not get anything. You know, and I, I prayed and I just, I didn't get that release to, release stay. to stay. So it's like, okay, we're going back to Lagos. And I knew right from the start that I don't want banking because at that time, it's like, you know, the big boys and everybody. I, want everybody. To enter the bank. Yeah. I knew, even though my father at the time was already working in the bank and it might have been possible to find a position, just speak to one or two people. I said, you know, I don't want bank. Well, I want media. So I went back to Lagos, um, started off at uh, what's this? Galaxy TV. Um, so I had not, like, you were still, let's still see what you can do. We're, we're still in that sort of probation phase. Like, and I didn't, I, I, I knew that I wasn't going to stay there. Mm. And I decided, no, nah, this, this is not what I want. This is not for me. And Next thing you know, uh, Fumi Yonda's former PA, who's doing fantastically well in PR and comes now uh, when it comes to Africa, Eniola Harrison, she reached out to me and said, hey, um, there's an opportunity at Flight Time. Flight Time Promotions, they're the ones who organize Rhythm Unplugged, I think the biggest concert in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And you know, December, you know that you've got to attend yes. Flight Time Promotions, Rhythm Unplugged. Mm -hmm. and and all that and they were putting together this stage play called for colored girls stage ah, adaptation wow and so the producer keke hammond needed an assistant keke and eniola are friends and i'd reached out to eniola before saying hey if antifomi has a spot hey i just finished i'm looking for an opportunity but they didn't have an opportunity for me so she told me about this other one and it was going to be one month. Um, and it was just like an internship type of thing. But I looked at the opportunity. It's one month. It wasn't like salary yes. based. Mm -hmm. But I would be working with Tiwa Savage or Maomi. Oh, the wow. Because these were the stars of that show. And I'm like, that looks exciting. Give me that. Sign me up. Sign me up. So I left Galaxy and my dad at the time couldn't figure out how on earth are you leaving this job mm. opportunity at an actual TV station to follow this one month, no promise of a job after like how actually to a normal person it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but that opportunity seemed more exciting, more colorful. I felt, hmm, I want that one. So I went for it and it was absolutely amazing plus i love stage play back in uni i always mm -hmm. used to go to the theater arts um you know side whenever they're doing their stage plays stage i think plays. we used to be 15 hour, 15 mm. hour to watch mm. and I, used to, I, used to stay. I still love um, mm. performing arts still now I well. so i think that's also something that sealed that deal mm. so i went for that we had an absolutely amazing show it was supposed to be two shows and then they had like an impromptu third show on the same day because the show was that good. So good. And they paid me well for that one month. And that's how my relationship with them started. They introduced me to Lagos Moms. Lagos Moms is a very popular parenting resource website in Nigeria. They do, you know, events now and all that, um, founded by Yeti Williams. So Keke Hamon introduced me to Yeti Williams who needed a writer for her website on parenting. And, you know, that's how I got introduced to the world of websites, blogs, CMS, all that fun stuff. And I started managing the site, writing. I learned a lot from Yeti Williams. So started writing for her. And then next thing you know, Flight Time also started their entertainment website. I needed a writer. And guess who they called? Oh. Ding, ding, ding. So I was working I was working for these two platforms from home, making about a hundred thousand naira. Wow. Each. No. Oh okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but hundred thousand naira mm -hmm. in twenty twelve mm, was a lot. That was my was someone that was really and I was working from home. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. have to get stuck in traffic, going anywhere. Mm -hmm. 
and it was and I was learning. Mm. So I did that for about a year plus. And then next thing there was an opportunity at channels. So channels I had applied to. I'd applied to channels just after I got back from NYC. Mm. And nothing happened. No call back. No, we saw your CV. No, nothing. <laughs> so, so you know, after then, I went into you know the whole website thing, working with Fly Time, Lagos Moms, and then like a year plus, there was an opportunity at Channels, um, and I saw the JD job description, and this was me. They were looking for me. Wow. Everything in that JD was screaming my name, right? So I applied and I got the job. In short, Mrs. Shola Momo, <laughs> who was like my final interviewer, she was so impressed uh, because they were looking to add someone to their web team. Mm -hmm. And here I was managing a whole website and managing two websites mm -hmm. by myself, creating, right? I mean, it was a lot of work. Sometimes I wasn't sleeping till like midnight. <laughs> mm -hmm. But point is, it got me through the door. Wow. So it started working at channels as a writer. What I really wanted for channels was to be a reporter. Mm. But guess what? Eight months down the line, I from nowhere got called to audition for TV. And you say from nowhere, but I don't believe it's from nowhere. Yeah, so when and I say from nowhere, it's like without lobbying, without but, but yeah, on. but your 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 work ethic, you were doing things that were speaking and lobbying for you mm -hmm. you see what i mean it would never be from nowhere that this is the thing that people think you know there will always have to be you know someone that goes before your work can speak yeah. true your I character agree. speaks true well go on and so yeah got a audition for tv and a few weeks after that there was an there was a, a situation at work um for the entertainment show because i i got auditioned i, I was supposed to present a new show Hmm. That's why they were looking for a presenter. Uh, mind you, I've never been on air before, right? And we're like, okay, let's look in house. Oh, my, okay, audition her. Audition went well, I believe. And they were, we were, you know, working on that new show, trying to get the pilot together. And then we had this situation. Um, there was this particular weekend, there was nobody to present the entertainment show for that weekend because. Hmm. There was a big event happening in, I think, Akwaibomo. Everyone was going to travel. And it's like, who's going to present entertainment mm. news this week? Mm. And oh, wow. our manager Look at that. Time, Look at that. Uh, Mr. Kayode Akintimi, bless his heart, I was like, oh, Maya wife is already good to, she's cleared for TV already. She can stand in. And I stood in for that weekend. And next thing you know, <laughs> a message from the top continue doing entertainment oh, wow and that's how i Did started presenting the entertainment show. look if if i had to sum everything up it's there's just you know they say um preparation meets opportunity there's just something about you that somehow you were just there when something was needed so mm. a lot of times when we talk about the story when we give when we share stories we just share them and people hear them they get all you know excited Exciting. but the truth is unless we distill the principles you know it's difficult to replicate you might you might like it but you don't really understand it so what I would like is, let us distill the principle. Like there's something about you. I can't even articulate it, but, but from what you've shared, somehow you are positioned in moments where there's a need. What, what would you, if you had to say, if you have to share maybe, I don't know, four principles, five principles, however many that you can, or even three, what, what would you say are some things that have, that are behind that my journey is because i'm at one with god mm. and you know i was sharing with a few friends a few days ago and i said when god elevates one mm. it doesn't just elevate for the sake of elevation 
he elevates because he's trying to accomplish something mm -hmm. right so that's my life's number one principle and I'm, i i like to say i don't have an agenda for my life okay i love that i'm letting you mm -hmm. in on my little secret mm -hmm. i don't have an agenda for my life literally if god tells me today girl go into the streets carry that old african bill like this bang, 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 bang. <laughs> you are going to see me bang, 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 in the middle of the road i promise you so i honestly as much as yes we'll get into the you know logical human for me that's the foundation of it all mm. because i didn't create myself i'm not my life's story writer even though i'm an active co-author there's a principal author so i follow his script that said passion mm. you see i might be weak physically i might be tired on a particular day i'm tired i don't want to do this if you say media my hour, there's work. Hmm. This work that I'm doing, <laughs> I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it. And you're going to wonder, was she lying that she was <laughs> not? Because the energy that comes with my work, mm. it is ridiculous. Mm. I cannot explain it. I can see the energy that. I have for my work. It's, <sighs> I tell people, please do not put yourself on a pedestal with my work. Don't <laughs> set yourself up. Do not put any relationship on a pedestal with that. It, you don't recipe mm. for disaster because that thing I cannot explain it myself. Mm. And it's just I can't change. explain it. It is who I am. It is Oof. from the depths of it, it. It is me. Remember, let's go back to the beginning. I said, what would I, what would I do? Which career would I, I wanted to do what I do every day. Mm my work is just the platform this is who i am for the sake of structure and world systems and world order yes she works on tv and this and that and she writes stories and that is who i am i'm just I so tempted know. i'm so tempted to ask this question because i know you're giving us a list but how are you so wise and discerning at such a young age to say, this is who I am. I'm, I am going to go in this direction because people go round and round in circles. They will do law. Then they will now move to this one. I'm finding purpose. I don't know who I, how are you so discerning at a very young age to look at something and say, this is, this is who I am and be brave enough to pursue it. Um, hmm. Interesting. We'll come back so, to the other one, please. <laughs> Let's put a peg there. Um, so one is, what's the, what's the positive word for stubborn? Determined, mm -hmm. assertive, <laughs> right? So I always say stubborn, it's not stubborn. <laughs> it's determined, it is assertive. Yeah. And I, I'm blessed to have just known myself from a very early age. You know, confidence. I'm just going with your heart. You know, the, there's something that ties so strongly to your heart. Mm. And was that from your it. upbringing? Were you? Uh, did you feel yeah. empowered by your parents? So I'm, huh. I'm getting into the the, the, the foundation yeah, and the principles. because I want people to understand. So my parents were very strict, mm. um, but it's very and and I, I I came into that you know that light that light bulb recently, and I said, actually. All my, all of us, so they're two siblings, were three kids to my parents, and we're all assertive, we're all stubborn children, good or not good. <laughs> There's no soft, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. All assertive, all confident, all mm. this is my mind and that is my mind. You cannot mm. force it, cannot twist force it, it, bend it. You can't um, bully me. And I I think there's something interesting there, which I might have to spend time and go back into the foundation. I say, what did our parents do to, mm. how can you have three kids who are all assertive, all, you know, mm. in that strong head, <laughs> in, in a way, <laughs> you know? So my parents want my father very confident, very confident. I mean, bold, a journalist, you know now, mm. right? he would he had he had something to say about issues he had a voice mm -hmm. he had voice. his own voice mm -hmm. right 
So very strong personality. My mom as well, um, in her own right, strong personality, prayer warrior, you know, spiritually. Mm. So <laughs> when you like, there's a confidence that comes with when you're in the presence of God and you speak, and, you know, I'm sure that, uh, and yes, my mom is actually my first spiritual mentor before mm -hmm. any geo, before anybody, my mother laid the foundation. So when you have someone who in the face of the secular world stands his ground, owns his voice, you know, puts him in trouble sometimes, right? But speaks with confidence, own, owns his own space, regardless of whether he had money, because sometimes the world is so obsessed with, you know, money as validation. But before my dad could rub two coins together, he had his voice, he had his confidence. He had, you can't bully me into silence because maybe oh. I don't have money, oh. right? On the other hand, you have a woman who who is very industrious. My mom will move from one business. We did the, actually now, thank you for asking that question. Some of the things <laughs> that helped me. Um, so my mom was very industrious. We God bless you. Head. God bless you for wrong. talking about this. Because like, sorry, you said, you said my mom, she set the foundation or something like that and i was just going to ask what does that mean so thank ah, you let me tell you <laughs> i just had a something just flashed in my mind so my mom was into business different businesses so i remember at times she used to make make pie she used to sell pastries i remember at times she used to do like yogurt and she would seal it like she produced it um we had cold room she used to sell turkey and we'll cut it for you and and all that we had a supermarket and guess what? Who is the default sales girl? <laughs> I was the default sales girl. We have been going to mommy's shop for as long as we can remember. And there was even a time when her shop was in Ikeja Cantonment. Mm -hmm. And we were living in Mushi, as you said earlier. Mm -hmm. And I would, I remember vividly, there was a particular day I had to go and open the shop. Mm. in cantonment i think i was 13 years old or so mm. and i i took the bus by myself went to cantonment to go and open shop so i've been confident for a long time i've been self self-assured in a way right if i can go by myself to open shop and interact mm. with customers and do all of that i came into my own very early on very i early. found myself i found my voice very early on so I'm sure those are actually principles that may not be as obvious to other people, but they did something. So I'm that kind of person who, no matter who you are, no matter what position you have, your voice doesn't drown out mine, period. Period. And my thoughts, time. my ideas, my opinion, my outlook are just as valid. I'm like, I have one head, you have one head. So how does yours invalidate mine, right? So I think that when we come into our own, when we accept who we are, accept that we are valid just by being, we are created in the yeah. image of God. Uh -huh. So your thoughts, and that knows, that's not to say that we're always right, uh -huh. but you must come from the place of that I have thought this, I am a person of my own. Like, mm. I don't need to leech onto someone else for validation mm. or that, you know, my voice is only valid because it's, a, it's attached to this person. Mm. So I think that's what has helped. And so guess what? My father wanted to be, to be a lawyer. My mom wanted me to be a lawyer. My sister went the way of law. Mm. So when I was going to decide, father, mother, and sister were saying, choose law, choose law, choose law. And in fact, at some point I got convinced because my sister was like, you know that if you study law, you can still go and choose, do mass comm if you want. <laughs> right? There are many people who study something else mm -hmm. and you find them in the newsroom. And that sounded like, okay, so that's like winning on two sides. Mm -hmm. You have your law, and you can still mm -hmm. do your mass comm. And at a point, I remember that I actually shifted ground and I started telling people, okay, well, what do you want to go and do? I'll do law. But you know, each time I kept saying, oh, I'm going to go and study law, saying it did not give me butterflies. Mm -hmm. Saying it like uh, I wasn't feeling ginger, like so. Later, I said, You know what? I'm not going for law, mm. Masco. I, I am at peace with when I say it. I mean, I was still in, I was still in secondary school, but I was at peace with what I was, I was saying. And I was saying, I was okay. going to study law, you know, my heart was not jelly. So, good. so I said, You know what? So, Masco. Good. 
when you spoke it, you were at peace with what you said. Yeah. And that, 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 that's a telltale sign that you're making the right decision because people often, you know, there's that uh, anxiety around decisions. Like, how am I sure it's the right thing to do? Should I do that? And they that, stay in that zone of indecisiveness forever. They do nothing, you know? So it's, 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 this is, this is a principle. This is something when you say, you know, one um, versus the other, how do you feel? How do you feel? Are you at peace? Do you feel, you know, incongruence? With, it, with everything that you're saying and how you're feeling. That's really good. Thank you, Maya. What was that other thing we put a peg on? Uh, <laughs> and I think we, we, we really have delved into that, but I'll just um, try and run through them. Passion. Mm. Passion will, will push you really far because it will show, even when you're, you do not intend to get people's attention, you will. There's mm. just a difference when you do something from the very depths of your soul, hmm. you would not have to be pushed too hard to do things. You you will be creative. You will have ideas. When everybody is doing the, you know, just give me the instructions and I'll, and I'll do it. You are the, how about we do it this way? You know, I have an idea. Can we, do, how about we try it this way? And people don't pay you to just follow instructions. So now I'm the founder of, Road to Success Seminar, a platform for African career professionals and entrepreneurs here in the UAE. All the people that work with me to bring this to, to light are volunteers. But I imagine that if I had to pay someone at some point, which we will, I'm not going to pay you to just follow my instructions. We have built, we're building something. We want, we have high ambitions. We have um, expectations. You're supposed to come and add because I'm not all in all. Mm, you're supposed to come and add. My wife said that, Clara. Say it loud. You are supposed uh, to come and add. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm going to be paying you for. And if you ask for period, that's why I'll add money because why? You are adding mm -hmm. what I cannot add myself. I may have the ideas. I may have, let's do this. But there's only, there's only so much you can do as one individual. Mm. So when whatever you're doing, whether you're being paid your worth or not, make sure you're adding. Make sure you are giving. There's nobody I have ever worked with today that I'm still not in touch with, that still don't send me messages. My, while well, we see what you're doing, we're so proud of you. And anybody, 50 years from now, if you go back to them, I'm sure they'll have glowing remarks to make. Mm. Why? I'm sure I gave everything that I could give at the time. Mm. So it's all about keep giving. See, when I started my career at Channels, so remember, I was hired as a writer. Eight mm. months later, I'm presenting. And in, in between all that, I am going out to cover events sometimes. Mm. So there are days when I resume my web unit assignment at 7. Actually, I get to 6.30 because I'm obsessed with arriving early. <laughs> so... I arrive maybe 6.30 or let's just say I'm arriving at 7, but mm. I start at 7. So in between all that, I have my presenting that I need to do. I've got a producer and if he says, oh my, well, I need you in the studio at say 4.30, when from 7, I'm supposed to close at 3. Mm. So let's say my studio time is 4.30. Guess what? I'm there at 4.30. So maybe there's an event that they need an extra hand to go cover. Event is on the island at 6.30. Guess what? My hour is on the bus. Heading to mm. my island <laughs> assignment at 6.30. Events don't start early, unfortunately, most times. So maybe events start at 8 o'clock. And maybe you're done at 11.30 or 12 p.m. Mm. You're back on the bus going home. To get home maybe 1.30 a.m., which I did a lot. Mm. And guess what? I still have my 7 a.m. in the morning. Love it. That's what a lot of people did not see. Um, I was doing a lot of that until gradually, you know, things started balancing out. But in that phase, when things were in, I, there are times I, I work seven days a week. Um, back to back. I get home 2 a.m., wake up 6.30 or 7 or 7.30. You're back in the grind. I enter Lagos by the expressway traffic. And this, is going the thing. There. and this is the thing. People often see the glamorized part of, of, of work that we do. They see the, you know, I don't know, 30 minute 
clip or showtime. 30 minute <laughs> show time. I think that's what you guys call it. 30 minute show time and come on. But they don't realize to produce that 30 minutes. There were days and hours on ending that went into that. But people don't see that. People just want, I think it's just this microwave generation. Everybody wants everything fast. The idea of fixing to be discovered is mm. now completely out. Like, you know, fix yourself. Do the work. Do the work in the dark. Be like a mushroom. Do the work in the dark. And before you know it, one day you will just come. Because I think that is the principle. In everything that you've said, that is the principle. It's that principle of doing the work when no one else is looking, putting your time in, and when the time comes that there is a need, people remember, people see, people remember, and they instantly you'll be the first name on their lips because why wow, you've been around since just just pottering about doing the work yeah. and 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 it's 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 amazing i i absolutely love that so so Maya, i want to ask you about the bigger commission so I, I for just speaking to you i can sense that for you this isn't just you know this isn't just coming on air and speaking you know you know you don't strike me as that kind of person who is just you know after fame for fame's sake or just trying to be in people's faces that if it, i sense with you that there is a deeper commission you know and and that's probably what has pulled you whether you realized it or not from when you were young that you know you've got a voice and there's a voice for the nations so i want to speak to you about that have you really really are you really in touch with it the larger commission around the work that you're doing or are you you know are you starting to to, to see it or am i wrong maybe there's nothing <laughs> <laughs> so uh, remember when i said it at the beginning that when god elevates one mm. he doesn't just do it for the sake of elevating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a bigger picture mm -hmm. and to be honest um i'd say that part of what you see as because you asked me well how are you so wise how are you so you know it's because i've been in touch with my god assignment for a long time mm -hmm. right i may not have been able to articulate it in words because you asked me okay what does god want you to do i may not have been able to tell you it's abc but i've always known that there's an assignment i've always known that every place that I've found myself is to aid that assignment. TV is a vehicle. Please, if you have just famous, I'm sorry, that doesn't help anybody. Doesn't yeah. I mean? Doesn't necessarily put money in your bank account. Yeah. So, doesn't affect your bottom line. <laughs> Not always. Yeah. So for me, it's I mean, to just be on TV is it's just part of the tools, yeah. right? It's. And it's for the assignment. Hmm. It's not just so that people can recognize you when you step out. It's for the assignment. So I've always been in tune with that. Um, I'm, if I were to summarize what my mission is, it is to bring good to the world, hmm. right? It is to be a connector. It is to help raise people. So, and I've always been doing that. Always, always. Um, let me just make a quick detour. This thing about purpose, what is my purpose? What is, I think I was there at some point as well. Like, you know, when it, I think a couple of years ago, it was such a big topic. And I eventually realized that purpose, the semantics of purpose changes per time. Oh. Right? So let's go to the scripture. I'm Christian. I'm going to reference uh -huh. scripture. Yeah, scripture ahead. were created to worship. That is our purpose. Mm. Period. You are a canvas. Mm. Your purpose is to be the canvas. Mm. If the painter wants today, I want to paint red, my dear, be red. Mm. If tomorrow the painter wants, you know what? I want multicolor. Guess what I'm going to be? Multicolor. Mm. I am a canvas. And ultimately, that's what the Lord needs. Mm. A canvas always ready to be used as mm. he sees fit. Mm -hmm. So maybe at a point when I was doing entertainment, my purpose was give a platform to those who would typically not be recognized. Um, so let's, because I know people like 
um, germs and fats. And mm. I was one of the very, I was, I think I was the first person who gave Tenny Makanaki a oh, platform wow. on TV. Oh, wow. I think I was the first person to interview her for TV. Um, Johnny Drill to today is like, you know, we may not be speaking all the time, but you know that I, that's my guy. And he also gives you that respect, accords you that recognition. Like, ah, this person, people like that, I can say that I contributed my little to their career. Oh. Gave them a platform where maybe no one else would have, or maybe yeah. not so many people would have. Or maybe it would have when taken longer. Saying, maybe not taken longer, I don't know. Oh. But the point is, they needed one, I yeah. provided one, yeah. regardless of, you know, so... When I was doing entertainment, I wasn't just doing entertainment for just the entertainment sake. I was actively looking for who can we help? Who can we give a platform to? Mm. Which unknown artist needs this airtime? Oh, wow. And if they went to maybe five TV stations, nobody would look at them twice because, hey, you have not, quote unquote, blown. I wasn't only after who had blown. I was after who had something to give the world. Mm. And a lot of up-and-coming artists, at least at the time, can say that my art helped them. Okay. So that's what I was doing with entertainment, right? Let's fast forward to now in Dubai. Uh -huh. So I might as well just face my, what's paying my salary? What's, what's putting money in my pocket? I do my media work and do my MC work and focus. But I thought, hmm, there's a gap. Um, Africans need to come together. A lot of Africans are coming in here. A lot of Africans are here and we're not coming together. We're not talking, especially when you jack back, quote unquote. Uh, there's, there's a lot of learning to do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's, a, there's a shift that comes. You need to learn the layout of the land. You need to position yourself. You need to, and you like, do you want to spend another 10 years learning that work? Making mistakes, falling, rising. When you can maybe attend an event like Road to Success Seminar, where mm. we've brought speakers who have gone ahead, we're doing great stuff to come and share. Sure. How about you come to that one event, spend 10 hours, get so much mm -hmm. connections, gems, principles, inspiration, all of that. And when I came, I kept saying, we need this, we need this. I kept saying it for like maybe a year and a year, a year and a half. Uh, yeah, and I just went at to some be point, it. It's like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So today you get a lot of people saying, Maya, God bless you for doing this. Maya, God bless Like the first edition, people got jobs from that platform. Oh, wow. Right? And you get people who are saying, thank you for doing this. We needed this. Again, mm -hmm. platform to spread good. I'm doing my purpose. Whether it's on TV, whether it's not on TV, is good needs to come. Good needs to be established. We need to do good. Oh. How do we do it? So and let's do it. So good. So good. Maya, you're awesome. And I could speak with you like, yeah, I, there's just so much. My head is just, every time you speak here, yeah, I'll tell you what's going on behind the scenes in my head. It's like a popcorn thing. It's on my head. It's just popping. Oh my God. I can, I can go in that direction and ask her that. Oh, I could go in that direction. And I just feel like, oh my gosh, we need to do a sequel. You need to come again. I have oh two, two questions that I absolutely must ask. Right. So I know that we're constrained by time. Um, two questions. The first one is, it's a bit academic, right? Because you've got a wealth of experience. You know, I was reading there, you were talking about, you know, being in the rooms with, you know, all these people and interviewing them. What are some do's and not do's, you know, when you are in the room with important people? What are, what are things that people should be mindful of and, and, and things that people should, you know, refrain from? And then the second question is, in this world where media feels very very <sighs> proliferated is the word i'll use with just so much stuff that is deprived of morality like how do you manage to stay as you how do you manage to maintain your call how do you manage to you know how do you manage to to 
to be upright and I'm assuming anyway, how do you manage to be, you know, a light in a world and in an industry that is, is, it can be very tainted or is very tainted. So two questions, if you like, just answer one. If you have only time for one, that's fine. We'll just no, you know, we, cry. We, we <laughs> so in my experience with me meeting big people, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think for anyone who does come into the room with any almost larger than life personality, you must ask yourself who you want to be after that encounter. Mm. Are you going to be the one they easily forget? Are you going to be the one that maybe next week you're actually going to be having tea break or tea, tea time mm. somewhere discussing? So absolutely don't do if you want to keep a relationship is be the i'm looking for a nice way to say this don't don't be a behind liquor mm. like don't don't do that mm. so anyone who's anyone popular known accomplished like they get it all the time mm. oh you're this you are high and mighty oh the earth moves at your like commend people but do it in such a dignified way mm. because people do deserve their flowers and we all enjoy being spoken well of but do it in a dignified way don't go on and on and on and on like oh I don't, like get to the point don't waste their time right? I love it. <laughs> minimize the fan girlism <laughs> or yeah, fan boyism like, acknowledge celebrate and think how can i offer value to this person and not waste their time at least mm -hmm. And don't think that because you're not at the same level that you cannot offer something. Mm, so good. So just think, how can I offer this person value? Mm. Right? And that, and that would depend on who you're with, the time you've met them, X, Y, Z. So that's, that's that one. Second one is um, how do you just stay true to yourself? How do you remain a force? regardless mm -hmm. of what's going on in media how do you, how do you stay was, uncompromising with your moral yeah values? I, 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 I will share something that my mom used to say and stuck in my brain and i'll say it in your and i'll try to translate mm -hmm. she would say that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you are the sinister of all eyes you are the star of the show mm -hmm. all attention is on you you can't be a spectator at the same time. You can't mm -hmm. be both star and spectator. You just can't. Oh, so sweet. focus, deliver, focus on you, focus on your content, focus on your mission, focus on what you're supposed to accomplish. Remember, I said something earlier that nobody can drown out my voice. Nobody can bully me or bully my voice or oh. because I stand Gidigba, like, let's go to Nigeria. Yeah. Moa, all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. solid. I'm solid. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm not, but I'm solid. And it is in that place of being solid in yourself, knowing yourself, being at one with yourself, being at one with God. You would not be easily buffeted by every strange wind. Hmm. Guess what? There's also, for, for me, for instance, um, because I know that what you see, what you hear, very important. The things that you feed yourself with. And it's not only food, it's music, it's movies, it's words, it's company, it's all of these things. You have to put boundaries. Hmm. There's certain shows that when they come on, I unfollow the accounts that usually post those content. Hmm. Because the, the, it's, it's disgusting. Hmm. My value and the values that they're about are not the same thing. I'm not going to give you my Instagram space mm. to populate. So good. It's one of the things that I do. So, um, so I do listen to circular music, but I'm very deliberate about not, you know, piling it mm. in my device. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it's deliberate. I'm not going to go mm. and look for it and keep it and store it. No, what's on my phone, it's sacred. It's what 
feeds me. I need to feed myself the right thing. And so in my storehouse, I keep the right things. So good. Right? So it's about being, and that's me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what will work for anybody else. Mm -hmm. Right? So those are just some of the things that I do. My, my relationships as well, I'm very deliberate about, I mean, just anybody cannot be around me. If you are someone that is, you gossip, you backbite, when you're with people, it's only other people and you talk about little things. If you're small minded, oh. you, you can't survive in my space. I don't have time. There's too many things to achieve. You like, I don't have time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't have time. Right? <laughs> it, it, just, it just cannot survive in my space. Mm. I'm too obsessed with greatness. I'm too obsessed with delivering. I'm too obsessed with doing the master's work. I'm too obsessed with my, what else are we going to do? How else are we going to dominate in this world? How are you going to make money? Because that's important. If you're not bringing to me things about money making, greatness, and just making sure that we die empty at the end of the day. I will not have time for you. Okay. I'm trying not to breathe so I don't interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is fire. Well, I love it. That's, really, that's, that's, it's, it's an obsession. It's, and it's not an obsession because an obsession is almost like it's here. It's, it's here. It's, mm. it's inside. It's all consuming. You know, it's, it's inside and it's, you know, it's, that's why we wake up every day mm. we just must do and if there's any you know final words is to whom much is given much is expected mm. i know without any doubt that the lord has placed so much so much inside of me it's how do we get it out mm. i remember if you're faithful in little you'll be given plenty you've been given plenty it's a principle and it, it ties to what we also talked about earlier, you know, getting the position, getting the opportunities. Have you been faithful in little? It's a principle that stands in anything. If you work with me and you're faithful in little, you have seen, ah, oh, look at this little thing and they, were, they did it so well. It's only natural. I will give you more. See, in this world, opportunities are hanging. Hmm. Oh career, money, influence, power, mention it, all the good stuff. People, some people are carrying it in excess. They're looking for who to hand over to. They're looking for who can, they can shed some too. Hmm. If you do not present yourself or if you have not become the kind of person they can shed it to, you will not get it. Hmm. Your environment must be ready to receive of the excess and take that as your starting point. So, Make yourself that environment. Right now, my environment is money. <laughs> my environment is primed for money because why? Money follows value. Money yes. pursues value. Mm -hmm. We've we've like we've established it. It's not just mm -hmm. in the talk; it's in the walk, mm -hmm. right? So, the next phase is the the finance to now build on a larger scale. The opera of the world whatever platform they've built is because there's financing as well to build it but you cannot get the finance if you have not established the value uh -huh. so be obsessed with that value uh -huh. it's only a matter of time drop let me drop like several consecutive my drops like pa, pa, pa. <laughs> Like, just, just let's just burn the studio. Let's just, you know, what, what else is there to say? Let's, it's, it's over. There's nothing else to say. Thank you so much, Maya. That was just an incredible session. Just, just, you know, opening our minds. I always like my people, uh, my guests to just speak to one person. You know, they've heard, and this is a lot of people, they'll say, um, but yeah, but we're talking to that person, we're talking to that person. Somebody who wants to be more, and they're just like, how do I even start? Just speak to, just give up in your final words, just, just speak to that person. Why should they be more, you know, and, and, and what can they do to just get on that journey today? Why you should be more because you are already actually more. And this is how I think about it. We are made in the image of God. So if you can, for just five minutes, 
allow yourself to sink in that reality of God's awesomeness, God's all power, might. Like just soak that in. I think that that person took time to create you. Mm. And at the end of the day, he said, you are the <laughs> Babambari, allow me, of the created work. Mm. Like you are the crown jewel of his creation. Mm. Default setting, you are more. Mm. Default setting. The question is, do you realize it? Mm. Have you allowed life, circumstance, situations to steal your identity? Because ultimately, I think at the base of so many issues is identity crisis. Mm -hmm. You have not to know who you are. The day you know who you are, the way you become at one with who you are, the end. The end. The end. The end. The literally the end. The world's gonna be like, wait a second. Who is where that? Did you person? Come from? <laughs> Isn't that the like where did you come from? Guess what? You so know yourself, and there's no other way to know yourself than to know your God. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one who's got the best script for you. And no matter the script the master gives you, follow that script. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. People want someone else's script. Many years ago, um, so if you go Hashtag Gram for Christ, G R A M F O R Christ mm -hmm. on Instagram. I did one post many years back, and it was like a revelation that I had about Mary, Virgin Mary, who gave birth to Jesus. So, Mary, pretty much our task was deliver this boy. Mm -hmm. Well, how about if she said, Ah, no, you mean that there's an opportunity to be the Jesus, mm. and you're asking me to just give birth to him? Mm. Oh, wow. So like, like as small and maybe insignificant as the role of giving birth to the Messiah is compared to actually being the Messiah, that role is very important. Oh. It seems small, but it's important. Who will give birth to Jesus? Say, John, to your love. <laughs> so this is my off. This is my <laughs> off air personality coming off. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Like, who is going to it. give birth to Jesus? Mm -hmm. If Mary mm -hmm. said, no, I don't want the job of the mother. I want the job of the Jesus. Mm. Be at one with your script. Be at one. There's a lot of that going on. People don't want their script. People mm. don't want their own calling. Mm. They want another one. Mm. And you will actually never succeed. Mm. Except you accept. You own, you and you dish out your portion. Mm find your portion your portion might just be school teacher your portion might actually be school teacher just clock in clock out go and teach those children you don't know which child and you don't know if the seed you put in that child is what will give us the solution for cancer hmm. well you want to be the one who gives the solution for cancer no that's not oh. your script your script is, uh, uh, and all of this is scriptural there's eye there's head there's nose there's Pinky toe, there's all of that stuff. Everybody wants to be brain or heart. Everybody wants to be liver or like wherever you find yourself, know that you're part of the body and you are important. Mm -hmm. Because if I hit this one nail against the door, the door just spam against this nail now. I'll feel it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So how about the nail despises itself and say, I'm just mm -hmm. nail, they'll cut mm -hmm. me, they can trim me, they can put gel on mm -hmm. me, they can manicure me. Mm -hmm. I want to be the hair. Because they will see me every day. Like, mm -hmm. That's what I think. And it's a great talk. <laughs> it's a great, fantastic thought. Thank you so much, Mayawa. It has been fantastic having you on Creative for More, the podcast. And um, we definitely have to have a sequel sometime because this is a really great conversation. Uh, thank I'm you glad. so much. <laughs> thank you so much. God bless you.